from McLean Park in Napier. Welcome to highlights of the third match in the Rossman's Cup One Day International Series between New Zealand and England. England leading the series by two matches to nil after the wins in Dunedin and Christchurch. Both teams had changes for today's game. First of all, a look at the New Zealand side. Robert Vance and Andrew Jones came in as top-order batsmen to replace Richard Reid, who was dropped, and Martin Crowe, who withdrew through injury. Also a change in the bowlers with Danny Morrison, uh, the fast bowler who appeared in the Test Series, replacing... John Bracewell, the off-spinner who was unavailable for personal reasons for today's match. In the England team, one change, Bill Athey coming in to replace Martin Moxon, who had a case of the flu, and Moxon relegated to 12th man. Well, John Wright, the New Zealand captain, won the toss and decided that England would bat first. Here at McLean Park in Napier today, we had uh, very good uh, ground conditions. The pitch was in excellent shape, and that's a real credit to the groundsman here, Gary Walkland, because in the last week or 10 days here in the city, there's been a cyclone bowler passing through and six inches of rain fell on the ground in the early part of last week. But the ground today presented in quite magnificent condition considering those weather conditions. England to bat first. We pick up the action now, and it's Danny Morrison bowling to Chris Broad. First ball of the game, Danny Morrison to Chris Broad. No ball, first up. So England underway already. Fred Goodall is immediately in the match. Oh, and Bill Athey's fallen over, and the run out is that, yes! Bill Athey has run out without having faced the ball, and a sensational start to the innings. Absolute tragedy here for England, but of course for New Zealand. What a marvellous way to start this match. Total confusion there between Broad and Athey in their calling. Athey did slip and had no, uh, no way of getting back in time there. He's out of his ground by at least two yards. Here's another look at it. Andrew Jones was the fieldsman for New Zealand. And Bill Athey scrambled his back, was miles short of his ground. And he didn't face a ball. And there's the first run off the bat. And in fact, it'll be more than one run. Tim Robinson will have time to come back for a third here. Martin Sned and Misfielding. And uh, three runs to Tim Robinson off the first ball that he faced. Well, finally turned by Chris Broad. Ewan Chatfield is after it. The outfield is too fast. And that's four runs. Willie Watson straying down the leg side and turned very fine by Chris Broad. An unsettling start here for Willie Watson. Two deliveries, giving away seven runs. The ball being deflected very fine. You and Chatfield very wide at fine leg. Four runs. Oh, that's straight through. Chris Broad once again very free, as we saw in Christchurch. Yeah, well bowled by Danny Morrison. They're getting Chris Broad to come forward. And that ball did deviate and went for three back pad there. Kept very low. But he could have got an inside edge there and played that onto his stumps if things had gone right for New Zealand. But that's well bowled. But Broad looking to be very forceful there on the offside. We well know that he's strong on his legs. So Morrison's got the line right there. That's the place to bowl. Nicely timed by Chris Broad. He's very strong off his pad. And that goes straight out to the fence for four runs. End of the third over now, 13 for one. Beautifully struck off drive. John Wright is after it. And the ball finally wins the race. And Chris Broad takes another boundary. Nicely played by Chris Broad again out through the covers. Andrew Jones makes the stop and the batsman will have time for three. <laughs> oh, 
Swung away by Robinson, four runs. Well, that's a nicely timed stroke again. Morrison straying onto the legs of Tim Robinson. And away it goes to the fence for another boundary. That's six boundaries so far in the England innings. Yes, well, Robinson, like a lot of England players, very strong on their legs. All very much over-tossed. They've just got to settle down, these bowlers, for one side of the wicket. Even if they're a bit wide of one side, it's better to be wide of the off stump. They'll be bowling both sides. You can't see the field to that. And the batsmen are really picking up runs easily here. The end of the over from Danny Morrison. Seven now finished, and it's 37 for one. Good looking shot, he throws that one on the up through the covers. That should run away with this fast outfield. John Wright had no chance. A good shot from Tim Robinson. Down the wicket, he could be gone, no. John Wright diving to his left. Seems a little bit slow to get underway, trying to hit it down over the top for Chris Broad. Didn't get hold of it at all well, but picked up three for his trouble. Yes, it was one of those catches that a, a, a younger man than John Wright, when you're in your 30s, you, you move a little bit more slowly. John Wright actually, anyway, is heavily built, no fault of his own. Um, I suppose it was just technically a catch to him. We'll see it again now. Diving to his left, I, oh yes, he just about was a catch. To a younger man, to a Ken Rutherford, it would have been a catch, and I dare say rather, not exactly, it was never going to be an easy catch, but it had been more takeable. This time over the top, clears the field, not that convincingly from Tim Robinson. Really launching into these uh, English batsmen. Another two runs to the total, so that's uh, moving along very comfortably from their point of view. But the Dyson was deaf a little bit in this over from you and Chatfield. Yes, um, Chris Broad coming down and just getting that one wide of John Wright. Tim Robinson taking his life in his hand. Uh, maybe they've decided that they're going to have a bit of a go at you and Chatfield. They've normally, I think, in these matches so far, have been content to play him and get runs from the other end. But um, it's going to be an interesting battle. I'd back Chatfield to win it if they go on much longer. Driving. No runs on this occasion. 49 for one, England. Oh, look, that's the... Um, this is the trophy we're playing for. And isn't it splendid? We saw it the other day. The polishing is terrific. And it's really glittering in the sun, isn't it? Lovely shot of it. Here's the Rothmans Cup, the one-day cup. Down the wicket, in the air, four runs. Good shot. Got hold of it well, Chris Broad. Another calculated risk. Yes, uh, probably not entirely classical, but he got hold of it very well. Looking for this lofted shot, both the batsmen. The 13th, 14th over, so the field, all those fielding restrictions, only two allowed outside the 30 metre circle. And of course that is the fact that there's only two allowed outside the 30 metre circle, which is probably prompting some of the stroke play now, when you get um, half four or five of them back, five of them back, then it's rather a different kettle of fish. Again, out to the leg side, out the single. Into the over, 64 for one. And Tim Robinson goes again over the top, four more runs, this time just in front of square leg. Really aggressive batting by the Nottinghamshire right-handed Tim Robinson. There seems to be some sort of pattern the Englishmen are working through. They don't like to see Ewan Chatfield dominate and bowl his 10 overs for very few runs. And so they're sitting about attacking him and uh, taking toll of anything that's loose. And he goes again. Identical shot. This time just a little bit behind square. Four more runs. Tim Robinson riding his luck just a little there. 
hit the ball in the air, but he found the gap very nicely inside the circle. Caught behind. Smith takes the catch. That was, again, well bowled by Martin Snedden. Tim Robinson perhaps is trying to be a little bit too clever. Trying to play the running shot down through third man. Top edge. And the catch to Ian Smith. 80 for two. Nice little innings there from Tim Robinson. And a uh, lot of relief to the New Zealanders because these two were really piling on the pressure and the runs and just trying to be a little bit smart here as Peter said just trying to it just a little bit too fine just getting the outside edge and Ian Smith does the job and he's going to catch with their seventh, se second wicket for 80 runs on the board there is again you can see the definite miss there To the fray very quickly here. That's four runs away down through backward square. Martin Snedden making the mistake of straying just a little outside leg stump and Phil Freitas onto the line of that very quickly. Didn't time that one particularly well, Phil Freitas. And the ball going relatively slowly out to deep mid wicket. He had time for two runs. But in the end, the uh, lack of absolute timing was in his favour. Chris Kugelein doing the fielding. Well, that's vintage stuff by Philip De Freitas. Down the wicket, great hit for four. Good shot. Goes across the line. It must have been going down leg side. Steve Woodward says not out. End of the over, it's 96 for two. What a good shot by Chris Draw, giving himself space outside the leg. So I'm hitting over long off for four. And that's the 100 up for England in the 21st over. And that's Chris Broad's 50 as well. Very good shot there. Getting away outside leg stump. Controlling it, watching the ball, keeping his head still. Lofting it over mid-off. Four, which has forced John Wright to place a man down on the long off boundary now. Oh, De Freitas swinging this high. Where is it? Could be over the boundary. It is. It's into the stand up there. Well, he really got hold of that one. I was lost it for a moment, but uh, that was right into the stand. Big shot from De Freitas. Well, this is an interesting promotion in the batting order of the street to see uh, De Freitas come in. He's a big striker of the ball, and he hasn't let it done much with the bat at all on tour, but it's interesting doing the conditions here today. Well, he's after it again. It's a straight down the ground. Six more. Great shot. <laughs> well, that's why he's been promoted to the order. He's got a free license, there's no doubt about that. And Kenny Rutherford obviously is having some difficulty here in slowing the run rate down, but goodness, uh, Daffy De Freitas here, an exciting uh, form. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. And this is what the crowd have come to see. Big crowd here now, the atmosphere superb. Swinging this one. Could be six more, he could be caught. He is caught. Chris Kugelein on the square leg boundary takes the catch. Philip De Freitas is on his way. So an eventful over, couple of sixes. And Philip De Freitas swinging Ken Rutherford high was caught on the square leg boundary. Well, that's one day cricket at its best. Three bold hits, two big hits for six. Now yeah, Daffy De Freitas has paid the penalty there, not quite getting it right. Just 23 have come in 11 balls, that's quite amazing. And the crowd very appreciative of this sort of hitting from Ian De Freitas. He's done the job for Mike Gatti. He is thoroughly entertaining, and let's have a look at that dismissal. It was angling down leg side, and he picked it up, swung it high. Reasonably short boundary out there, but he just didn't quite make it. Chris Kugelheim did well, really, didn't he? He did. I think the Freitas would like to have got a little more loft on that, but didn't quite get it right. It's a good catch, actually, standing very close to the boundary line. And now Mike Gatting, the England captain, comes up to the wicket. Obviously delighted with the situation at the moment. 114 for three. Averaging over five runs and over. That's an incredible strike rate at this uh, early stage of the match. And Mike Gatting finally off the mark. Turning one away into the leg side. Chris Kugelheim, the man doing the fielding. Very simple single. End of the over. 1-2-1 one, one for three.
Chris Broad. Well, it's uh, an edge that races away for four. Very fine. Not much you can do about that one. It was a full delivery. In fact, it was over pitched, full toss. And uh, Chris Broad got a thick outside edge and it raced away. Good looking shot. Got through the field this time. Not a lot of weight on it, but uh, certainly enough to get to the boundary. Fast outfield here. Round the wicket. Bowled him. Did he get a little edge on that, perhaps? Inside edge. He came down the wicket. He wasn't quite there. He went to swing it through the offside. Got the inside edge, and it ricocheted onto the stump. So Mike getting out. And that's a big wicket for New Zealand. A very important blow, and well done, Kenny Rutherford. But Mike Gatting can be a very dangerous attacking player. He likes to hit the ball hard up and over the field. And to have him dismissed for six in a good batting condition, it's a very big breakthrough indeed. Kenny Rutherford, two wickets. At a very important time too, Mystery. Yes, he's done well. Got rid of the Freitas. Somewhat daunting task at that stage. And now Mike Gatting departing into the stand. I'd say he's dragged that one on. An inside edge coming down the wicket there. Looking for Batted through the offside, certainly dragged it on. Well, that's what happens in this sort of cricket. Anything and everything goes. Good stuff. And as you say, uh, dragged it on, but he was trying to get on with the job and uh, paid the penalty. Fifth wicket. He'll tear, brother, not lasting very long out there today. Just one run, but uh, Chris Kugelheim showing his versatility. Bowling. Now let's have a look at the dismissal. The fifth England batsman dismissed Chris Kugelheim with just his third delivery. Bowling to Neil Fairbrother. Here it is. Chris Kugelheim showing his versatility. Bowling off spin today. And the ball just holding up a little bit, and uh, Neil Fairbrother playing too soon, and Chris Kugelheim takes a, a very simple catch. You've got to pick up the singles like that. And they don't want to lose another wicket for at least another 10, 12 overs. And after that period, then they can launch into a all-out assault. Once again on the English bowl uh, on the New Zealand bowling. Swung away by Cable. Oh, that's poor fielding. And it goes straight through for four runs. That's the end of the over, 161 for five. Just short of you and Chatfield. And one run for Chris Broad. Full toss, he's mistimed the shot, he's got away with it, but now a marvellous throw by John Wright. But Broad was home. It wasn't a great ball, it wasn't a great shot, but it was a fine piece of fielding by John Wright. It's one day cricket, Peter, isn't it? It's Kenny rather, but not quite getting it right there. The head high full toss and Chris Broad trying to whack it away there and John Wright very quick there to pick that ball up a direct hit. My word that wasn't close to. Broad opening his shoulders. He's got that one through. Four runs for Chris Broad takes him to 88. And it's 179 for five. Chris Broad certainly in total control here. He looks so composed and very unusual shot to see Chris Broad play something like that to the spinners. Capel facing Kugelein. It's high. There's a man underneath it. This could be a wicket for New Zealand. And the catch is taken. Well done, Danny Morrison. He was in the air for a long time. Chris Kugelein has his second wicket. And England are six down. David Capel is out for 14. That was a very good catch by Danny Morrison. Because he'd already misfielded one on the boundary before that went for four and all of a sudden you've got a high one and he had to wait a long time for it 
people came down the wicket, the Cougar line, got a lot of height on it, straight up. Morrison had to run in from quite a distance, 15 metres. He had to wait, and he took it well. It's a good wicket for New Zealand. John Embury has his first run. The appeal is for a stumping, but Gorse just got back in time. Well bowled by Kugelein. Well, I'm absolutely surprised at Chris Broad's tactic here. He wanted to cut something pretty straight. And uh, really, that should have been out by plenty. In fact, uh, that is, well, you judge it for yourselves. takes advantage of his good fortune hits the ball to the fence for four and post the century well he's done it in style Chris Broad and hitting it for six the umpire has signaled six Embury playing a very typical John Embury shot highly unorthodox but very effective and that's six more. Well, Chris Kugelein getting a bit of stick in this over. Second six, and uh, John Embry's gone to seven. Well, it's an all-out effort now by England to get some quick runs, and they're chancing their arm, and it's been well struck. Very unorthodox approach there from Embry. Almost a bit of a chip shot there, but just enough carry to get over the boundary. And the England 200 posted with that six. It's 205 for six. And Smith appeals for another stumping. The batsman is home again. Kugelein pretty keen. And the most eventful over there from Chris Kugelein. It's 205 for six. Bowl in. Bad shot by Chris Broad, but well bowled by uh, Martin Smith and kept it up, kept it straight. That's a big wicket for New Zealand at this stage of the match. First ball of the 44th over, and Chris Broad is out. Well, that was a very adventurous shot from Chris Broad. A real big swipe across the line, something... The ball just short of the length there. Just too totally. But the crowd very appreciative of Chris Broad's innings. 106 played in fine style. Standing ovation there, quite rightly so. Paul Jarvis off the mark, stopped by a great badge, but a single taken. Embry's got this one through and is going out to the fence for four runs. Well, it might look unorthodox. It's a typical Embers stroke. He plays that shot as though he's squeezing a wanky bit of toothpaste onto his toothbrush, doesn't he? He backs away to leg and squirts it off the face of the bat. I've seen him play many of those, and it seems it, it really um, was four more runs. In the air, should be caught, and finally is by Martin Sneddon. <laughs> Goodness me, that had the potential to be a terrible mess up. But finally, Sneddon took the catch. And Embry is out for 15. Well, that was not a particularly clever stroke at this stage, I feel. Anyway, Embry's out, and New Zealand, I think, well, could very well be on course to win this game. And what a great triumph it would be. And uh, especially as Martin Crowe isn't playing, and they've got jolly nearly a second 11 in some ways. And, um, Grant, wouldn't it be marvellous for Eden Park in Auckland on Saturday if we were to go to that? It's 2-1. Oh, it certainly would set it up. Here's the catch. And look at uh, Rutherford coming in and Sneddon, and there's a real mix-up here. Mine, yours, Rutherford was going to have a go, and finally it was Sneddon. Do you think Sneddon turned to Rutherford and said, how dare you, sir? <laughs> Actually, I tell you, there was another thing going on then. If you watch Embryo when that catch was taken, he was running away to the pavilion. If he had dropped it, Sneddon, he could have turned around and run him out with the greatest ease in the world. Single here for Jarvis. Oh. 
That's the end of Bruce French, and it's 218 for nine. Doesn't look marvellous when the stump goes cartwheeling like this. Boom. <laughs> it depends whether you're in front of the stumps or behind them. <laughs> I think when I batted, they did that most of the time, but I'm not certain. I really very much enjoyed it. I think if they reach 230, they will be grateful. Mind you, on New Zealand's form in the last two matches, they may struggle to get there, but um, somehow today, it may be that the worm has turned. England have thrown away a great opportunity, and cricket can grant, as you know, at times be a very unforgiving game. John Wright has a number of players in here saving the single. Lifted by Redford and held. What a fine catch by Ken Redford. And England are dismissed for 219 in the 48th over. And there is the sad departure of other sad for the followers. He did well, but he, well, look at that catch, how he goes to his right now, rather than low down, took it very well. Well, in the end, England would have been very disappointed with that total, all out for 219, halfway through the 48th over. They had a magnificent start after Bill Athey was run out in the first over. Robinson and Chris Broad took the score through to 80, and then De Freitas and Broad took the score through to 114, and just the 22nd over, and England really had a big score of 250-plus in their sights. But some good containing bowling from the New Zealanders really kept them at bay. The wickets fell regularly. Ken Rutherford took two for 39 from his 10 overs. Martin Sneddon finished with the figures of the inning, four for 34, his best return in one day internationals. He was fully deserving of those figures. Ewan Chatfield got just one wicket, but uh, young Morrison and Watson at the top of the list there, both rather expensive and couldn't complete their 10, but full marks to Sneddon, to Rutherford, and also to Chris Kugelein, two for 40, with 15 runs coming in his last over. So it was a total of 220, or a target of 220, that New Zealand had to chase after lunch. A very gettable target in these good batting conditions which England proved early on. Let's pick up the action now in the first over and it's Philip De Freitas bowling to the New Zealand captain John Wright. John Wright's underway. Four runs out through the leg side. So New Zealand off to a good start. Four without loss. Needing 220 to win, let's join our commentators upstairs now, and here's Grant Nisbet. Thanks, Peter. A little shaky stroke that from John Wright. It didn't clear the infield by too much, but it's ended up at the fence. And so New Zealand underway. Well, that's a lovely stroke from Robert Barnes. That's off to the fence for Paula. Funnily enough, Grant, as I look out of the corner of my eye, I can see just down below us where we're sitting, uh, a, a flat, dark glass president or chairman of the New Zealand Cricket Council, um, Bob Barnes, who is the father. Yes, indeed he is. Well, that's the end of the second over, 10 without loss. Loud appeal for LBW. No, says Fred. I think I'm with Fred Goodall entirely. It was off stump, and it might have been missing it, and I think he was perfectly entitled to say not out. I do get awfully bored, though, with the Freitas way he goes on every time. A fail again. Not out. The Freitas doesn't like it. Fred's not interested. End of the over, 12 without loss. Crashing shot by John Wright. That's four runs. And that's a very good shot by John Wright. He's getting his troops working very well, very well organized out there. Everyone knows what they're doing, where they're going. Taking position very quickly. Three men there on the offside field for John Wright, saving one. Slip in the gully, two men catching. John Wright gets this one through very nicely. 
should go through the boundary for four indeed it does a very nice shot that by John Wright just over pitch the bullet by David Cable John Wright punishing it through the covers for four runs Ball then New Zealand lose their first wicket that one from De Freitas kept very low and Robert Barnes unable to jab down on it in time and Barnes is out for five it's 24 for one in the ninth over Maybe a little bit disappointed with that as De Freitas well, just short of the length, well, it kept very low. And he did square up a little bit. I think in this sort of pitch, you're really going to be looking to push forward. 24 for one. Pulled away. First bounce for four. Good shot. A well played by Andrew Jones. He's got it through the field. Find that very sweetly. Jones takes his first boundary and goes to seven. Well placed by Jones. If you're a New Zealand supporter, it doesn't matter how it's done, but how many he got two is 42 for one at the end of 13. That's over the infield. Good looking shot. Four runs. John Wright, he's played that one a lot today. Do you know what occurs to me, Mr. is that he has played it. He's played it three or four times. Why on earth is the... Do they not try and change... See, the thing is, the absolute play rule is up until 15 overs, they always have a fine leg and a third man. With a chap like Wright, I would have thought it was a very good case for having your man jolly in the square, because that's where he hits it, isn't it? Oh, and that's... Uh, could be a run out. Oh, if that had hit, it was all over. And again, the New Zealanders in all sorts of trouble. John Wright coming down, realising there was no run. Well, you see there again, the pressure. The pressure of four dots in the book in succession. And the scoring rate falling behind. Wright was off. There you see him, the right of the picture now. And if Gatting had hit here with his underarm throw, it would have been all over. Oh. I mean, he was... <laughs> <laughs> he was in a different street, different town almost. John Brace will not here today. Mark Crow also unavailable for the uh, back problem. Nice views over the back of the stand here. Beautiful new stand at McLean Park. An impressive stadium. Andrew Jones, he should get two here. Bill Athey, the man down at Deep Square. Hasn't had much to do today, Bill Athey. Frustrating, isn't it, when you get to left out of the side and then finally get a game on a nice day on a good pitch and you run out without facing the ball. Oh, bowl then. Andrew Jones, clean bowl. He's trying to give himself a little bit of room. Rather frustrated. And Paul Jarvis got through and knocked the stump out of the ground. I think he may have gone off the inside edge. I wasn't certain. Would you? Yes, perhaps. You might be right. He looked to be playing a little squarish, didn't he? I thought so. Giving it, you know, inside out. Let's see. No, no, it came back quite a lot off the scene. It did, yes, it did, did. Yes. It did come back a lot, didn't it? Yes, so somewhat surprisingly. But he was trying to hit it a little wide, and Andrew Jones out, 62 for two. Shot, beating the field. Four runs, that was a fine stroke. Nicely swung away by Wright, and four runs. The sparing die by Neil Fairbrother is not quite good enough. Mark Ratebatch has his first run. And he'll come back for a second, in fact. Neil Radford very nearly hit the stumps down at the bowler's end. John Wright was just uh, waltzing quietly through. Might have been interesting. Anyway, that's the end of the over. As we have another look at this one. Here it is again. They just ambled through. Bit of a misfield there by Neil Radford. And then John Wright just ambling back. Neil Rad Radford saw that. Had a go at the bowler's end. 
people on the leg. He's going safely through for two. And, uh, David Cable there hobbling up to his position. His forward square leg. Deep forward square leg to John Wright, who's about to take a new guard. Just check on his old guard. And await the next delivery. Neil Radford. This is the start of over number 24 now. New Zealand 76 for two. Run rate is 3.3 at the moment. So almost halfway through this New Zealand reply to England's 219. And John Wright, more so than anyone, I think, will be conscious of the need to start pushing it. run rate required now starting to creep up nicely played here by John Wright this should be his 50 and in fact it is so John Wright has yet another 50 That slower ball again, this time Wright has read it well. And Chris Broad can't get to it. And a second bound running over. And away it goes, it's a very fast outfield. Tim Robinson doing his best. But that was a beautifully timed stroke by John Wright off the back foot. And his tenth boundary. Well, this ball didn't uh, bother John Wright, got on the back foot and just with a little forearm jab, touched it away and look at the ball run away, run away from Tim Robinson, just uh, gathered speed, sitting across the ground. New Zealand had 16 runs off the previous two overs, so there has been a major acceleration in the scoring rate here, 89 for two, John Wright 61 of those 89 runs. Beautifully picked up by Wright, four more. Well played by John Wright, four more. Easy single down to long off. Wright advances to 74 now. New Zealand to 105 for two. A bit of room for Mark Greatbatch, and he brings up his first boundary with a fine shot off the back foot. Over the top, it's high in the air. It's run. Runs. Up by Steve Woodward, signal six. It was about six inches over, so good shot. Very good shot, in fact, by Mark Greatbatch. Picked that up beautifully, didn't he? And um, it was clearly over, six inches or so, as you say, over. But wasn't it lovely? I mean, he, he, he saw it early, hit it beautifully. And, um, well, I mean, that rather emphasizes, I think, the psychological advantage New Zealand have got. Look at that. He just fairly, fairly whistled away. Very sweetly timed. And now, of course, the field is being changed. Oh, that's uh, runs down there, very fine. Should be four. Chris Broad, no chance. So, uh, four more. On to 91, John Wright. End of the over, 148 for two. Oh, this has gone fine down the fine leg. Should be four. It is. Four runs off the bat. Over the top, should clear the field, it's a good shot. In fact, he hit it a lot better than I gave him credit for. Very good shot. Down to uh, Whitish Long on. To John Wright moving on to 97. There's one of the milestones, it might be both of them. They've taken one. Great Batch is coming back for the second. He's home and John Wright has a century. 
John Wright, 100 not out, is 153 for two, a partnership now of 101, unbroken for the third wicket. Embry to continue to great batch, full start. And it's hit to the square leg boundary for four. Bad ball, got what it deserved. It's in the air, John Wright could be out here. He is caught by Tim Robinson on the deep backward square boundary. Right out for 101. New Zealand 171 for three. And it might not be all over yet. Well, just when you say that players are playing responsibly, we would have John Wright trying to get a boundary, but perhaps it wasn't necessary. Things were under control. And he's lost his wicket from the same person that he has just brought, probably done. It's 171 for three. Shot by Rutherford, he's got it through the offside. Ken Rutherford gets his first two runs. Full toss off the outside edge for run. Very effective shot. 182 for three. And Mark Greatbatch goes to 48. Yes, this ball certainly got what it deserved. Wide full toss outside the off stump. Greatbatch trying to hit it square, but got it fine. There's no way that Chris Ward down there at third man could ever stop that. So Paul Jarvis won't be happy with that delivery. Probably trying to get a block holder in there and just got it offline. Well, New Zealand have got a proud record in international cricket here at McLean Park in Napier. This is the third one-day international they've played. They haven't lost one as yet. They've beaten Sri Lanka, beaten Pakistan, drawn a test match from Pakistan. And Here's the run rate, almost back on level pegging in the 41st over. So we should play all our games here, Penny? I see you're doing your best to convince the NZCC to have a test match here next summer. Provided they can grow grass on the pitch, of course, but the facilities are quite outstanding. And Paul Marks, the Hawke's Bay uh, Central District Cricket Association. Good shot by Great Batch. And it's past getting. It'll go down to the side screen for four runs. And Mark Greatbatch has posted his half century. He's 52. And the score is 186 for three. Nice throw from Greatbatch. It's flying across the outfield and four more. Meets it on the full and it's through. And it'll go all the way to the fence. Well, it was well played by Ken Rutherford because he opened the face a bit and he hit that squarer and it gave him a better angle and uh, thus found the gap. Over the top again, that's a good hit. Four runs to Ken Rutherford. End of the over, 206 for three. Dug out by Great Batch. He might take on Chris Broad, whose throw is not quite as strong. And he does. A couple. <laughs> Quick single called for, and Fairbrother wasn't able to pick it up. He's got a right on top here, and it's really just a matter of time. Certainly set it up, though, for Eden Park on Saturday. New Zealand fighting back well. And it reminds me a wee bit of predicament Australia got into a couple of years ago they were well beaten in the first two came back and won the last two that's right and uh, New Zealand looked as if they had that series totally wrapped up but all credit to Australia they turned things around and they really won the last two they got to grew in confidence and won the last one quite convincingly New Zealand with that opportunity of turning the tables now on England oh he's dropped it well in fact was that a chance no one seems terribly disappointed. No, they don't, but uh, I thought it was, Grant. I was watching it, uh, not on the monitor. Let's have a look at it. Yes, it was a chance. <laughs> he didn't get much encouragement for the rest of the uh, Englishmen, did he? No, no, just another day at the office. Great Batch helps himself to another single here. 
it was well played, opening the pace. But, uh, no excitement at all in the ranks. Just mistiming it a bit, Mark Rapex. He uh, just played the shot a shade early, but he was in the middle of his follow-through, as you see. Not too good for the head, that, either, I wouldn't have thought. No, it's reasonably hard out there, the pitch. Must be turned by Ken Rutherford. Might look for a second one here. No, he can't go. He's got to get around Radford. <laughs> and in the end, great batch is scrambling. Rutherford was rather impeded by Neil Radford. Yes, that was a difficult situation for Ken Rutherford because uh, Neil Rutherford, Rutherford was uh, looking to come back. And there's uh, Mark Rapich. He thought Ken Rutherford was coming back and he had to scurry back in a hurry because Ken Rutherford got mixed up with Neil Radford. New Zealand needing five runs to win this match. And a little nick, is there? No, there's not. Well, Mark Greypatch didn't think so, and neither did Steve Woodward. Well, certainly uh, Neil Radford thinks that uh, Mark Greypatch touched it. Let's have a look at it. He just tried to run it down the third man. Doesn't seem to be any sound in our uh, on-pitch audio. We've got a microphone in that stump. Doesn't seem to be much there. But we can't be sure of that really. The Englishman are rather sure, but uh, Bruce French didn't look that convinced, did he? No, he didn't. Um, and Neil Radford could have could have saved himself all that anxiety if he'd caught the ball early in the over, perhaps. So 47 overs completed, and uh, in fact, 46 completed. So four to go, and it may well come in this over. New Zealand needing just five. It's been a good performance by New Zealand. John Wright's really laid the foundation. He has batted well. He's batted well throughout these uh, three one days and uh, looked a little more positive than he has in the past. Maybe it's the captaincy factor, but he's looked to strike the ball very well. But uh, it's been a good all-round contribution. New Zealand, as I said a wee while ago, uh, looked in, in a little trouble early on in the English innings because uh, the English really rattled it on early, didn't they? And then they, when they brought De Freitas in, and he went mad for a couple of overs, picked up 23. But then the English really um, only had themselves to blame because they fell away rather, lost too many wickets too quickly, didn't really get the score they, they probably should have in those earlier stages. Lifted by Rutherford. There's four of them. 219 for three. It's only a tie at the moment, isn't it? Yes, it is. There's still one run to go. It's like the parting of the Red Sea. Something like that, Joe. I suppose it's one of the problems just then, because John Wright was besieged by... Uh, well wishes which is all very well but if it's rather difficult and uh, many grounds around the world players that well spectators just aren't allowed on the ground it's been a very good atmosphere here today i don't think there's been any animosity involved at all scores are even and the crowd is poised to charge let's hope it's not a close run out decision Chopped away by Rutherford, everybody's off. And New Zealand have won this game here at McLean Park at Napier by seven wickets. Yes, yeah, a good win for New Zealand, thoroughly deserved. The batsman played well today. John Wright, the pick of them, he really did uh, do it well. But it's been a marvellous day's cricket, a great crowd, a great ground, and really uh, a very good one day or indeed. So New Zealand, after looking to be in real trouble early on, when England were batting and batting very well. Finally dismissed England for 219. In the end, absolutely no problems for the New Zealanders. Their best batting performance in a one-day international since they played Australia at Perth back on the 3rd of January. Uh, Vance went in the 9th over, Andrew Jones went in the 19th over, but then a stand uh, of 109 to the third wicket between John Wright and Mark Greatbatch ensured the victory. Ken Rutherford was there with the local player Mark Greatbatch at the end. The other players not required, 10 extras, 220 for three, New Zealand winning halfway through the 47th over.
look at the uh, England bowling figures. Well, Philip de Freitas toiled hard. He was perhaps a little unlucky not to get uh, one or two other wickets with some very good chance for LBW, but one for 30 off 10 is a good return in the context of uh, today's match. Capel was expensive. Paul Jarvis got a wicket. Bradford... Uh